Good afternoon. I think what I got here is uh, I'm going to do a couple of sections on this instead of doing it all in one shot. But finally got around to prying this guy off and seeing uh, what it's all about and seeing if we can get a nice, more permanent modification done to really finish off uh, just one of the, I wouldn't call it necessarily a big con, but just one of the, the shortcomings of the Echo RB60. Uh, a lot of people have kind of commented that when this guy is sitting here, you've got about eh, half an inch or so of space from the bottom of the bucket to the agitator. And so what's happening is it's just letting gravity do its thing to kind of whatever's here is just falling through. So you're really not getting a good push of the material or the product, which means it's not falling through and getting spread evenly. So you end up with some spots that might get a little more, maybe some that are, or I should say, maybe up to the rate you're trying to spread at, and then other spots that are getting a little more sparsely hit. So, and I've been kind of struggling with when I get near the end of the bag, especially when I'm doing a bag rate and I'm trying to throw it all down in one shot, uh, you know, you're kind of doing that rocking motion where you're trying to get the, the product to kind of fall down to the back here. So one of the things I wanted to do is I wanted to check on this agitator and say, okay, you know, it looks like it's probably held on by either some type of clip washer or something else. But what I ended up doing is I just grabbed crowbar, just a flat face crowbar. And what I did is I went right underneath. And as I was pulling here, like this, I would have my fingers wedged on the other side, just like that. And so I had my fingers wedged. So while I was pulling with the crowbar, I was also pulling up here and it stopped, popped right off. And there's really nothing to it. I mean, if you look inside there, there's nothing broken. There's nothing that is really struggling to hold this together so what I, I look at is you know obviously it's a it's a hex shape but what you see here is see the snap that's all it is it's just this plastic snap that goes right through the bucket it snaps in right underneath here by the plate there so it kind of comes in right down there let's see if I can get my finger in here and point right here it snaps through and you can see it kind of wiggles now because there's nothing there so when I put it back together obviously I have to lift this up because this not only snaps, this also pulls up a little bit. You can see me doing the, so it's gonna hold it up a little bit more so it's in with the gear. So I'll put that all back together. But one of the things I saw is it's gonna be a lot easier for me than drilling through right on the center of this angle to come in from this side and figure out what it is I can do to cover up that extra space. I've, th I've thought about maybe dremeling out a little bit of a uh, spacer bar here and just kind of maybe sliding in some some rubber material, something or a brush material that'll scrape against it. So I've got a couple of ideas, but the next video you see will be this downstairs in the workbench getting uh, modified and seeing what we can do. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm three minutes deep already and all I did was show you how the agitator pops off. But honestly, it's really not that big of a thing. It mine popped right off pretty easily. I think so long as you got the leverage underneath it and it just pinches one side when you're doing it, you're good to go. I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. So I've been doing some research and I think I've got it nailed down. So the agitator has got that much space. Obviously that's where it sits on the bottom. So I gotta find something to fit this gap that will not only just kind of push it along, but maybe also help guide it a little bit. I kind of rummaged through a couple of different ideas. I thought about taking something like a little cable tie U-bolt, setting it up like that. But I said, nope, that's just gonna be too many holes in this. It'll make it too weak. It'll probably just break off. And I said, well, what if I just take a couple of small screws, just put a couple of screws right through, right? That'll grab it, but then you could potentially scrape the bottom too much or it just, they can get loose or end up pulling. And I had a really good idea. So what I've got here, still left over just from other random projects is this. This right here is nothing more than a shelf bracket. See that? It just pops into the side of the shelf just like this. And then you just lay down like your laminate shelving or your cabinet shelving on top. So I figured if I could grab one of these guys, and maybe I could take use that hole that's already drilled. If I mount it underneath now, 
what do you see? A catcher and a scraper that I could angle one here and then one the other way so that as this rotates, it's grabbing the material and it'll draw it towards, however I decided to mount that, it'll draw it towards the holes, keep kind of scooping it in. So as it gravity feeds down, it'll scoop and pull. So one thing is though that I noted is that as this sits, I'll show you the picture here, it sits a little bit below. You can see that right there. It sits just a little bit below. So I'm actually gonna take my Dremel with a cutting wheel and I'm just gonna go ahead right across this and sh shave it right down. And then we're gonna take this piece and I might just cut off this nub anyway. And then what I also grabbed was a neoprene washer. There we go. I grabbed a small bolt and the nut. And what you're gonna end up with is something like this. Let me get that in the camera, there we go. Boom. So that will mount right here, however I want that to look. If I want it on the very edge, in the middle a little bit, but I can have it pull, as you can see, I can have it angled. So it's always gonna be circling and pulling the material, almost like a little mini scoop, instead of just dragging, kind of like flipping around in there and just hopefully moving material around. It'll actually scoop the material into the hopper. So we're gonna get going on that probably uh, in the next day, and I will, Post the result when that gets out. It's not a lot of weight, so it's not going to put a lot of stress on this. It's a single bolt, easy to manage, easy to keep track of, and uh, we'll see how it does. And this is all stainless as well, so I'm not expecting any rust out of these. These are all stainless parts. All right, stay tuned. We'll see how this works. So you can see what I ended up doing here is I took the regular shelf bracket and there was already the hole mounted to mount right over here, and you can see I kind of shaved them down. You can use a uh, like a Dremel with a cutting tool on it. What I actually ended up doing is I went and just flipped on the bench grinder, grabbed my vice grips, threw on my safety goggles, and just grinded them down. It was you're only doing a little bit, so it was just enough. And you'll see, and these are still kind of hot because I literally just did this. So, but you can see right here. It's gonna sit nice, exactly where I want it to. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I could take the nub off, but for right now, it, it's, I don't mind it. It's just more agitation, right? Another thing for it to grab. Next, now I'm gonna take this guy, and I was trying to figure out the best place to mount them, but oh look, underneath, they already have little circles marked from when they, uh, they inject molded this. So we're just gonna take this over here. I already got the drill set up on the bit. And I'm just going to hold it in place. We're going to drill right through it. There you go. Two holes. Ready to mount. Let's see what it looks like. All right. Welcome back. Uh, it's a new day, and I'm just working on finishing up the uh, final steps here so I can get this added to the uh, the spreader. I'm going to see if I can give it a shot either later today uh, or tomorrow to see how it operates. The one good thing I've noticed is about what I'm putting together here is that when it's all said and done, I'll actually be able to come back and do adjustments to this if I need to. So if I find that the way I'm shaping these um, scoops, if you will, or these little paddles isn't really working out, I can always come in and adjust them if need be to angle a different way. And, and you know, maybe it changes based on the prill size if I'm doing seed versus fertilizer. So we'll, we'll see how that works out. However, I just wanted to kind of lay out here what the, the parts, the pieces are. So we've got the little bolt. I've got a neoprene washer. And I've got myself a nut. As well as obviously the hacked up hinge for uh, the cabinets. And so right now we know that this thing spins clockwise. So it goes like this. So in order to make that operate i'm going to make sure that the paddles are set to kind of scoop just like that i'm going to angle them right now first i'm going to set it up and you'll see when i when i put it through is i'm going to set the angle on this a certain way i've kind of thought about this i went outside yesterday i looked at the tool and i wanted to see uh the spreader i should say and i wanted to see what it was when it spreads what it looks like what it and that one's not going to fit i got the wrong bolt 
I just, I wanted to see how, you know, logically it might work out. So we are going to uh, check all that out. We're going to put all that together. And that one was the wrong bolt. thought I had the right bolt. Apparently I did not. No big deal. Now I have the right bolts. There we go. Put this guy on here. Put the washer on. And the bolt. Simple as that. And I just need to get my one more bolt. Here it is. That one is a little long. Let's get one that is. There we are. That's the right one. So again, pop this on. Put it through. Put the washer on. And the bolt. And like I said, this is fully adjustable. So I'm just going to hand tighten it now and I'll get to something a little tighter when I'm about to put it on. But final product, there it is. So as you can see right here, you can see the little paddle here. So as it spins clockwise, it's already got an angle on it. And you can see right here, it's angled out. So what this is actually gonna do is as it's turning, it's gonna go ahead and I can see there, I can just simply modify. This is gonna push out. So as it kind of clumps around here, it's falling in. This is going to be able to push it out back in. I can adjust these as well. And I could say, well, that's not really working for me. Let me angle them this way. So now it's going to scoop and pull. So it's going to kind of just do one of these and pull it into the, uh, the, the drop box as it comes down. So it'll kind of help along. So again, this whole piece here, the goal is that there's a gap, right? There's nothing happening right here right now between these on each side. And so if there's nothing happening here, the prills are just sitting here and they're just falling by gravity. Nothing is kind of helping them through. This will allow a much more even flow. I still have a gap here, obviously, but, you know, I don't want to be just sitting here turning this into a full-time shovel. But I think either by doing this, so allowing it to kind of just pull it in and down, keeps prills moving along. It keeps them shuffling over and through the, uh, the openings so that they can go through the holes. Or even like this, and this might work better for seed, to keep pushing it out as it kind of clumps here to push it out and into the bucket or just set them straight and just have them be like this and just have them just there to move product around. We're going to test. I got basically the three different versions of this, but just so you see, this was a shelf bracket that was grinded down so that it fits the spacing. Let me make sure I got that. There we go. See, fits the spacing done. It's a bolt, small bolt, probably a, uh, it's an eight millimeter. If I had to, I honestly didn't even look. I just have my rack of tools here, but a small bolt, neoprene wash. You could probably get away with a metal wash or two, and then the nut on top, and I can attach, and I'm going to tighten these up a little more, but as you can see, I can adjust these and tighten them up even more so then they won't move, and that's it. There's not a whole lot of weight added to this. It's not going to put a lot of stress on it. It's not bending these around. It's not going to cause these paddles to break. And this is going to be a real big help. I guarantee it. But next, we're going to go ahead out in the yard and we're going to throw some product in and see how it throws when we get to the very end. Thanks. So here we are. You can see I set my angle to scoop in. We're going to see how that works. Tightened everything up. Turns out these were 9 millimeter, not 8s. Uh, I didn't tighten them too much. You can see there's just a little bit of squeeze on the neoprene. Um, I went with the neoprene over the metal because I didn't really want to start messing around with anything from the washer perspective on the, the plastic. Plus, if I put a little bit of effort in, I can make these move without even loosening these. So they kind of are just adjustable as they sit. So now we're going to go ahead. And like I said, this piece fits right on. There's a hex shape in there. Fits on the hex shape and you can see the little pops those actually will snap through right in the bottom there. If I can zoom in on that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop it back in place. There it is. Snapped right back into place. And if we get down here nice and close, let's see. We can see how close this actually is here to the bottom. 
I mean, you can see right there, I am just barely, what, a couple sheets of paper off. So it's right there on the bottom and that's just gonna help do the scoop. It's just gonna be able to rotate around. Let me get my hand out of the way. And as you can see, just rotates around and it's gonna help to either pull or you can turn these in the other direction, just like that. And now it's pushing into there. So we're gonna see how that works. Like I said, I'm gonna play around with the push and the pull on it, but I think either way, what I've ended up here with is a real nice solution that's gonna allow me to just keep things moving. Hey guys, so just a final thought here, and don't mind the eye, I got a little sty problem going on here that's been bothering me for a few days now, but that modification should work out a lot better than, uh, than I initially hoped. And I don't have the product with me now that's gonna be coming in, I have Carbon X on its way, so I'll be getting that down uh, probably in the next couple weeks, and I'll, I'll put some videos up so you can see how that agitator works, not only when the, the hopper's full, but also as we get down towards the bottom there, and we really, you know, see if we can scrape the bottom a little better and, and move some product around. I know one of the things that we were struggling with with this particular unit, and again, it's it's not bad. There's there's not many shortcomings for the price and what you're getting here, but the fact that that agitator had about a half inch or almost an inch of additional space even with bigger prills it wasn't able to kind of grab them and toss them around so i really think that what i put in place here is going to work and again i might play around with it but at least again it's adjustable i can even pull one off if two of them working together is doing too much and it's not allowing the product to fall fast enough to get in there so we'll see what happens, but you know, I just wanted to point that out. I wanted to throw some closing thoughts on there. Like the video and I hope you have a great day. Take care.